broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm, pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. I'm Nathan Mum, your host and technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise, our co-host, Mike Roday, is in studio today. Mike's an award-winning author and a human behavior expert and lover of all things AI. We are live yeah, streaming during, five of, uh, during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. We are friends from different backgrounds. Where we bring the best technology show possible weekly for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. We're glad to have Odie, our producer, at the control panel today. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. All right, today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum, we're unpacking a tech turmoil. Apple's new video reactions are causing chaos in the virtual meetings and beyond. We're also discussing the landmark payout to an Uber Eats driver in a face scam scan discrimination case. As the affordable connectivity program funds dwindle, millions of low-income families face the loss of crucial internet services and subsidies. Meanwhile, a hefty $9.9 million fine was levied against a man for unsettling robocalls. Do you like robocalls? I hate robocalls. You hate robocalls? Well, yep. this guy got sucked with a $9.9 million fine. Good. I don't think he's going to be doing that much more. Then, don't miss our guests. We have Peter Jurgis, who will shed light on how AI is the revolutionized WordPress websites. He's also going to talk about how AI can help you with your business, or personal website. And stay tuned for a riveting blend of technology news and experts' insight. So grab your VR headset, adjust that tinfoil hat, and join us on Tech Time Radio. In addition to these features, of course, we have Mike's mesmerizing moment, our technology fail of the week, a possible Nathan Nugget, and of course, our pick of the day, whiskey tasting with Mark back in studio again today. We decided to have a day off last week. We are going to see if our pick of the day gets zero, one, or two thumbs up by the end of the show. But now, it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right. Story number one, the Affordable Connective Program, a $4.2 billion federal effort to make Internet service more affordable, is expected to run out of funding this spring. Let's go more on this story with Karen Westland to hear what he has to say. The Affordable Connectivity Program, which was tucked into the 2021 infrastructure law, was part of the Biden administration's initiative to connect every American to affordable high-speed Internet. But federal officials began winding down the program early last month when they stopped accepting new applications and enrollments. Paloma Perez, a spokeswoman for the FCC, said that the end of the program would be a step backward and that officials were working with lawmakers to think about what the future of this program looks like. Participants will continue receiving full benefits through April, according to the Federal Communications Commission. In May, Internet companies will have the option to provide them with partial discounts using the remaining federal funding. All right, so let's talk about this. So this was a big thing. We talked about this about two years ago when it came on out, right? We we're really excited about yeah, it. We we talked about it. Uh, our president decided to give affordable connectivity program to low income houses across the United States. Now, and how did they do that? Did they do that by subsidizing internet companies? Yep, uh, they received thirty dollars off their internet bill each month, and households living on eligible tribal lands were able to receive a discount of up to $75 a month. 
More than 2.3 million households received the reduced bills or effectively free internet service through the program itself. So there was, so it wasn't necessarily just free internet. It was a affordable process of internet. So they got the internet down to $19. That's what Comcast had. It was like a $19 right, package. So Comcast was offering their service, uh, their basic service for 19 bucks, and then the government was paying the balance, right? Um, well, no, no. So the, 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 actually, it was like a $45 package with the $30 discount. It came to 19 bucks. So 19 bucks per month was what the low-income or a part of this bill was expected to pay. So it was $19. Right. So if I were on that program, I would pay Xfinity $19. Correct. And then Xfinity would bill the government the rest of that money, and the government was going to pay that to the Xfinity directly. Yep. And so that happened. Mm-hmm. But now all of a sudden, essentially, millions of low-income families are about to lose the internet subsidy. So this is kind of like when you get that package and they throw in HBO for free for two months on your your direct TV bill or your internet type of deal, and then they accidentally forget to remove it on that package, and it stays on, and then you call them up and say, hey, what's this $19 service for you? Oh, I gave it to you for two. Essentially, their subsidy is going to run out. Some of these companies already have it in the process where they're just going to go in and automatically charge them the full price is this, of is the this, service. Is this a result of like uh, the same problem that – medical insurance does they bill outrageous amounts for things like band-aids and stuff to cover the subsidies that uh, are given to other people well, I don't know if this is exactly like the medical field but essentially a lot of people today uh, specifically the elderly that's really the market and it was really a surprise because the administration that's currently in office right now thought that this would actually go to a lot of low-income individuals. And what it ended up going to is it went to low-income or fixed-budget individuals mm-hmm. took advantage of this. So elderly individuals that may not have used Internet a whole lot uh, really took up the offer to have the Internet services. And guess what? All these people have become addicted to the Internet. They didn't have the Internet oh, before. No. Now all of a sudden they like it. They say that it's much easier Twenty-three million households essentially received the reduced bill, or some of them, if they're on tribal land, effective internet services for free. Um, the program was tucked away into that 2021 infrastructure law, and now the problem happens is there's no more money in the account itself. Now, Vincent Coleman, a 26-year-old medical student in West Virginia, said he'll probably have to downgrade his internet plan, although the new plan would cost about forty dollars a month instead of what he currently has at the speeds at the $19 a month service because he just can't afford it any longer. Uh, Other individuals include people that are living in, again, uh, elderly homes that had internet services so they could stream, do VR uh, simulations, and have full speed, fast internet uh, in elderly housing. We'll also probably see this now restricted To basic level services. Well, this doesn't look good for the Biden administration, does it? Well, no, it's going to run out um, at the end of next month. Now, the question I have for everybody here, should all Americans have access to free Internet? That was kind of the whole idea when it came on that. We've we've talked about that before. Yeah. So should we as Americans have access to free Internet? Where are we basing this on? Are we basing this on the capitalistic society that we are trying to be or the 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 socially responsible one that we should be. Well, I'm just kind of asking in general. What, what's your thought on that? I, I actually think if I think you're in America, I think as 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 more stuff is is done through online, I think that service should be available to everybody. I do too because I, I there's agree. too much at, there's too much going on of necessity nowadays that you do online. Yeah. So like if you file for unemployment, if you do some of these civil service services. It's so much easier to do online than to go into an office or to mm-hmm. go into a location, yeah. fill out paperwork. They never get the, re- the paperwork trail is just horribly non-existent any longer. But if that, you didn't submit you know, it a certain way, the customer service rep on the phone doesn't know how to process your next question that you ask them because they can't find you online. Well, that's just you know that's one of the that's just going to be added on to the other problems of social. Does the Biden administration fix this things. before the election? Uh, I bet you there'll be some effort. Okay. I think you'd want to. I don't think you'd want to go into the election not having some of these free services, right? Maybe not. I don't okay. know. All right. Not my not my bag. All right. Let's let's talk about story number two here. Well, story number two is about something we used to do. Yeah. 
We did. That, yeah, back in 2019, 2020. Remember when we were goofing around with Uber, Uber Eats. Eats? Yeah, we do that like all on the weekends. Yeah, I paid off my car using Uber Eats. I do that, and then I work for three hours, and then I take that money that I earned for the three hours and go out and have a nice dinner. Yeah, well, Uber Eats is in trouble because uh, uh, a, a black Uber Eats driver has just received a payout after racially discriminatory facial recognition checks prevented him from accessing the app to secure work. Now, we've talked about facial recognition. Yep. A lot. It's pretty. It pretty it would and be, it every has, time we talk bias. about facial recognition, it's always about the problem of discrimination. It, it is. Discrimination. It is. Well, I don't know if you remember this piece of the app. At any random time when you had to start work with Uber, you had to take a picture of yourself. Of yourself, yeah. I do, absolutely. Right. And they would do that like you're in the middle of a run. Like 15 minutes into it, it'd be like, are you still the, the person driving? Here, here I've been on the road as I pick up the item yeah, to deliver. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get... <laughs> I'm trying to get something like done, and it's like, you hey, you to, have to, to take, take your a picture. picture as I'm driving. Clearly, you see that I'm going, and, and it was as an annoying as could be. And then when we had masks you put on, you'd have to take a picture of your face without the mask, and then mm-hmm. you'd have to take a picture of your face with the mask. Yep. Well, when this individual, Pa Addresser Manjang, began working for Uber Eats in November of 2019, the app did not regularly ask him to send selfies in order to register for jobs. But the Microsoft Power Uber Eats app increased these verification checks, as you know. Yep. And in 2021, it said after careful consideration, quote unquote, his account would be removed due to continued mismatches. Ooh, mismatches. Uh, An Uber representative said that uh, the real-time ID check is designed to help keep everyone who uses the app safe and includes robust human review to make sure that we're not making decisions about someone's livelihood in a vacuum without oversight. Now, again, I this sounds like double speak to me mm-hmm. because how is that how is that going to keep you safe? I don't you know, know. What's the safety feature there? Uh, the Equality and Human Rights Commission and the App Drivers and Couriers Union funded Mr. Bajang's case. The EHRC was concerned that the artificial intelligence in the facial recognition checks had deprived him of his income. The ADCU said the number of selfies Mr. Manjang had been asked for amounted to racial harassment. The union told BBC News that it was working hard to ensure workers' rights were protected as the pace of development of AI and machine learning tools in the workplace accelerates. And you wonder why I'm always complaining about AI. (laughs) Mr. Manjang, who is reinstated and continues to work for Uber Eats in Oxfordshire, said that and this is in the UK, if you didn't know that already. Yeah, I got that. Uh, said that the out of court settlement marked the end of a long and difficult period for him. His case shines a spotlight on the potential problems with the continued potential problems of AI uh, for, low, uh, for low-paid workers in the gig economy in this case, and he hoped the decision would help strengthen rights and protections of workers in relation to AI, particularly ethnic minorities. Baroness Faulkner, who chairs the EHRC, said Mr. Manjang should never have had to sue Uber Eats to understand the opaque processes affecting his work. That makes sense. Uh, Microsoft has previously admitted its fake over... <laughs> was that? Well, that was a Freudian slip. Was it? Was fa- uh, facial, not fecal. Okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> facial recognition software, it actually works out. Is it? <laughs> Facial recognition software works less well for people belonging to ethnic minorities. Uh, and previous cases involving the police, home office, and universities have shown the same thing. Now, this is a problem. Facial I recognition have, I is have, not. Yeah, this is this is one of the issues that I have talked about I this with police have. monitoring down in L.A. We've talked about this. This has been a story that pops up probably every month or so where there's a pretty large discriminatory act that happened with the software. And as funny as the companies keep on just getting well, away, we we're just we, kind of saying, well, it's our software. We even used some, I don't, re- I don't remember what it was. It was some facial recognition thing and it would, it would scour the internet for your, yep. For your face. And we did you. Yep. And did it find any of you? It did find a lot. It did find a half of me. And then, I then think, I other... think it found all the recent publicity photos yep. that we did. Yep. And, 
it found none of me. It didn't. And that it had found all these pictures of different people, people that look like me. Some of them were pretty good looking too. Well, I, you know, I'm pretty good looking. Uh, that's, I'm, that's a, so it's just picking up the good looking picture. That's, that's right. It was saying. getting all these these supermodels and comp- saying, "Hey, this is this guy." And that's I was right. like, "Yep, that's right." Yeah, the, uh, the facial recognition is not working. And I don't know what uh, Apple has on the phone to scan my face to say that it, I'm who I am or who, I'm who I'm not. Because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, it's like a hit and miss. Yeah, I don't. I, I really hate the facial recognition of of iPhone. Okay. All right. Story number three. Now, Odie is not doing whiskey today, but she was really excited about covering this subject in our production meeting. So she's <laughs> on story number three. Okay. So essentially, Apple recently came out with a new update in their last one that yep. included something new called reactions. And when you're on like a FaceTime call or any video conferencing call and you throw up certain hand signals, it'll um, it'll have a reaction gesture on the screen. Okay. So there's a bunch of them. But so so, so, so what what does that look like? Well, like if you throw up a peace Peace sign, sign. if you throw up a peace sign or actually not even that a thumbs up, thumbs up, will give you a little thumbs up bubble by your head. Okay. two thumbs up, you get confetti. Oh, two thumbs up for confetti. No, fireworks. Okay, fireworks. A single thumbs down will be a thumbs down emoji. Yep. Two thumbs down, you'll get rain in the background. Rain in the background. Okay. And then <laughs> a bunch of others as well. There's like a heart. There's like an okay. Balloons, there's confetti. Sounds really stupid to me. And lasers. Well, so, okay, so tell us what happened here. So essentially, a bunch of people have come out in recent months. Confused because they'll be on a conference call. Yep. For example, uh, a Penn, Pennsylvania senator who was recently interviewed on MSNBC live was yep. just having confetti in the background. Confetti in the background as he's going through yeah, the interview. As he's just talking, you know. And then there was another person who was discussing layoffs for the company. Yep. And suddenly balloons come out. Oh, that would be great. You're and in you the middle that, of talking know, about layoffs. And, like, let's have a party. I got laid. Well, I guess it would depend on if you were okay with that. <laughs> I got laid off. Balloon, balloon, balloon. <laughs> there you go. There's also a woman in Boston who is a mental health counselor. Yep. And she was on the phone with a client discussing you know, their mental health. And out of nowhere, a thumbs down came on. Oh, and, you know, she expressed how that was embarrassing and kind of an inappropriate moment. That's more therapy. <laughs> that is more therapy itself. Um, so Apple has said that they've fixed the problem. Okay. You basically have to click on your camera and then turn off reactions. So this is newer cameras and the new iPhone iPads yeah. and the new... No, it's not not the new ones. Okay. Anything that was updated to, to the, the new, new OS. version. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so instead of just automatically taking it off, they've just said you have to manually take it off. Yes. Way to go, Apple. But at first, it was something that wasn't. Yeah, people didn't really notice this feature yeah. it was enabled by default. Well, yeah, with the we've new talked iOS. about this before. How how they will update something and they will turn on features that now you they do don't give know. it in the notes. See, have you ever when you do an update, it comes I, in the very first thing says. All the notes that you I do. read, yeah, I read patch notes. Okay, so you read patch. Okay, so if you read the notes, you would have seen it. And in the update, they actually did include, "Hey, we have enabled new gestures," but nobody reads that. It's just like those no, terms of the- service agreements. Be uh, next because you no, can't install also, the software unless you hit yes. It's anyways, interesting because it's not just for FaceTime, which is what I assumed. It's no Zoom for the camera. Yeah, Zoom. It so does it on Microsoft will- Teams. So if you do this, taking the selfie, you would have a thumbs up in your selfie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you're Using really a Mac irritating. or Apple device Correct. with the latest update. Now Zoom says just stop. Zoom Apple says that stop. they're in the process of making this uh, state essentially not on by default when you use the Zoom app, app itself. But we do our Zoom meetings for our production meetings. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't have. Want a, that. I don't have a camera. Next time I'll be on my Mac, and then every time I say something, I'll keep on doing like two thumbs up, and I'll get like uh, balloons that will be popping and. It'll be, it'll make yeah. me feel much more. Uh, excited. Yeah, and I'm going to drop off the call. <laughs> I'm going to be like, and, and well, everybody we'll else is going to drop off. Down I'm we'll going to give everybody a Zoom link, and we're going to go over there, and we're going to talk smack about you. Okay, so here, so here, yeah, here, here, I'm going to give you a, a little prelude into the Mike's mesmerizing moment. I want you to do some research during the show, specifically about the lady that was doing the voice conference call setup. For this with the gestures and what happened. 
because that that's kind of you you kind of do counseling. That's a part of your everyday job, right? That you that you do that. So I, I want you to kind of be ready. I'm going to come back and ask you a specific mic mesmerizing question on that's, this. That's that's an hold on. What? That's another thing. She was just resting her hand on her chin, and it went down, and it went down. And yeah, I tried. It was to a do... misrepresentation. So you know what? I, I actually I actually mimicked it. So uh-huh. what happens is if you do it right here underneath, and you have your thumb kind of come out right. in itself, it actually does trigger the the motion itself. But I went on Facetime last night with my sister, and I threw up all the hand gestures. Yeah, and it you have to hold it for a really long time. You do. So you do. So it's not as that easy that to happen. So it doesn't necessarily happen out of the blue. Right. But I think in the story of this lady, I think she was like in the middle of crying when this actually came on out. Yeah. The woman so, was, t- they were discussing her depression and she yeah. was just there listening to her with her chin under her, <laughs> I mean, her hand under her chin and then boom. So the gal starts crying and then he starts putting down. the thumbs down. That's not really uh, good. That, yeah. more. That, that, that's more therapy that, right there. Yeah. That is. I'm sure, I'm sure she had to do some. So, uh, profusely call, yeah, apologizing, some therapizing, saying, uh, saying I am so sorry. I was not saying that I I, I wanted you to be down. But on, also, on. why wouldn't Apple, like you know, when you open when you after an update after you've updated your phone and it tells you, hey, here's what's new, yeah. and it's specific to every app. Why wouldn't that be the biggest thing? Well, I don't. I, I don't think. It, I don't I think they thought that. this was going to happen the way that it happened. Okay. That, that's so, that's so, that's the normal thing. They just roll out something, and they don't understand the ramifications. Yep. How many of, people are going to use it? Right. Yeah, I mean, this when you is do like, air quotes, it essentially thought that that was the peace sign. And if you look at it, that's kind of like peace sign. So if I'm on a national televised and I'm doing that, that looks like lasers. peace. And you say a quote unquote, and then all of a sudden <laughs> you're having balloons come in the background. I, I don't Probably know. Probably not acceptable. I, I think some of this stuff is absolutely and ridiculous. Maybe our guests will start putting up gestures and he's got a Mac and then all of a sudden they'll uh, Well, let's, I don't know, maybe. Story number four, U.S. fines $9.9 million for thousands of disturbing robocalls. Let's go to David Larson for more on the story. A U.S. federal court has issued a penalty and an injunction against an individual named Scott Rhodes for making thousands of spoofed robocalls to consumers across the country. Robocalls are automated phone calls that use automated dialing software to deliver a pre-recorded message to many recipients. A federal court in Montana fined Rhodes with a $9.9 million penalty and an injunction against future violations of the Truth in Caller ID Act and Telephone Consumer Protection Act. When right, did this so, happen? Was that? I used to get these all the time. You used to get the, okay, the, so first the of all, this guy, stuff. this guy is not very in, in, intelligent because you can like spoof calls and everything like that. This guy actually had, he was doing robocalls in a robocall bank and he had his actual caller IDs as his actual caller ID so they could trace this guy down. So first of all, if nice. you're going to do something bad that, that's kind of borderline illegal, you, you need to be at least a certain level of okay, knowledge this, we don't to need, do that. We don't need to use this as a platform on how to do bad things better. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> so that's, well, that's my first, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, you know what? He kind of deserves that fine because he's not very intelligent on how he did it. Now, second of all, he essentially ran an illegal and malicious uh, robocall campaign, specific regions. Um, that had inflammatory and disturbing messages. So it wasn't trying to sell you something, essentially, um, for the vacuum clean s- salesman that's trying to always sell no, you something No, this is like better. a couple of years ago. Was yep. it, this was a couple or few years ago. I would get a call on my phone yep. that said uh, s- stuff like, uh, your social security number has been acquired by the FBI and you're in big trouble kind yep. of thing. Or, or the IRS. I would say the IRS. Oh, yeah. That's the right IRS now because it's tax time. So that's like yeah. the big one right now, right? The IRS is is going to levy fines against you if you don't pay the certain amount. You need to call hey, us You need back. to call this number. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And I'm sure that people called that number. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened so after that. So essentially several people received these calls, reported the number. Of this harassment to the Federal Commission Communications Commission, the FCC, and essentially trace the activity very simply to Rhodes, a resident of Ohio, uh, Idaho, and Montana. So he was like at three different states. He was moving around. Instead of just sending and trying to sell something, he was essentially telling people disturbing facts regarding a woman's murder that was in Brooklyn, Iowa, 
near the aftermath of a, a, an incident that happened. He then decided to go on regarding an investigation regarding the killing of one woman and injuring dozens during the Unite the Right rally in August of 2017. So he was taking disturbing facts of events that happened, and he was calling into those areas and telling people about these disturbing facts with what he figured was his fake news or his news that he wanted to share with people. He just wanted to get all his news out, so that's all he did was robocall everybody. So he was robocalling with news to tell people about disturbing things that happened. Now, Way to go, Scott. Well, Scott now owns $9.9 million well, to the Well, good for you, Scott. Well, I don't know how you're going to pay that off, but hey, buddy, go yeah. right. Well, yeah, there you go. Well, that ends our top technology stories of the week. Up next, we have the chief executive officer of Swift Press support, Peter Georges, who has a unique ability to communicate technical information to non-technical clients. Known as the go-to guy for WordPress and AI, Peter will explain how AI can work for you and not against you on any website. Buckle up as we drive into the show at 88 miles per hour into the next segment. See you after this commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. Well, that got really quiet. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Lomar. Our weekly show covers the top technology subjects without any political agenda. We verify the facts and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course, a little whiskey on the side. Today, Mark Gregoire, our whiskey connoisseur, is back in studio. So Mike and I can ask questions about the whiskey. Mark, what have you chosen for us today? Well, today we're doing New Riff. And no, it's not a story about Elon Musk. Okay. <laughs> it is a bourbon. New Riff, single barrel. Barrel strength. He always has to go after. I like that. I like that. Okay. So tell us more about this. (laughs) So from New Riff's website, New Riff offers a robust single barrel program. So selections are bottled at barrel proof without chill filtration, allowing all the characteristics of the barrel to shine through. So no two barrels are the same. Each create their own story. This whiskey has a broad, fulsome mouthfeel, leading to a sweeter vanilla accent before a gathering of rye spices, clove, cinnamon, mint, dark berry, into the finish with brambly red black fruits amid white pepper and clove. Okay, okay, that's a lot of taste. Uh, hey, Some they clo- they love describing their whiskey on the website. Okay, clove. Now this is from New Riff and from the New Riff Distillery, which is in Newport, Kentucky. It's a straight bourbon. It is aged four years. It is a hundred and ten point five proof. The mash bill is sixty five percent corn, thirty percent rye, five malted barley. It is roughly fifty five dollars. Oh, See, I that's like that. See, that's a little strange because it has it has it, kind of that rye bite that I I dislike, and it, it tastes to me it tastes kind of like a hundred dollar bottle too. So it's not a rye as as we pointed out, but Mike, it is of a bourbon. It's a called it's like a high rye bourbon because it's thirty percent rye. Okay. Oh, well, okay. So that's a higher percentage of rye in a bourbon traditionally. Now, is this only available on the Rift Club itself? Because it says right it, here on the tag, it, it says no. Did you get it through your, through your secret? <laughs> no, you, you can buy these throughout uh, various liquor stores in certain states. Okay. Okay. It's actually, I actually. And how like much, it. How I, much is this? $55. 55 oh, you're going to buy it. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and the <laughs> secondary on this is roughly the same, like 60 bucks, 55, 60. So. Okay. You're pretty okay, good. So now unusual. I would like to remind everybody to like and subscribe. In addition, please put a comment down there for what your favorite whiskey is. And we'll see, if we haven't reviewed it, we'll see about reviewing it. All right. So let me just tell you, Mike and I look at the YouTube stuff and we're like, oh, okay, we get some comments here and there. Mark is upset with the listener audience because some people comment and they don't really say a whole lot. 
So Mark wants all of our listeners to go into YouTube and say, I like the whiskey. I hate the whiskey. Put new whiskey in there. So if you're listening to the show right now, and it looks like we have about 1,500 people watching our show right now, go in and make a comment about the whiskey specifically. So Just for Mark, Mark? Yeah, so that Mark will you be able to- have idea what you're asking for? Well, a comment on, on, on the whiskey itself. <laughs> all right. Well, with our first whiskey tasting completed, let's move on to our feature segment, Technology Insider. Today, Peter Gurgis- I'm sure. I, I, I think it's sure? Jurgis. Yep. Joins okay. the show, an AI enthusiast for all things website. Peter has a proven track record in crafting exceptional websites for business and personal brands. His commitment to excellence in the A is evident with the ability to communicate all these technical details to the non tech savvy clients. So you're up to bat here, Mike. So listen in if you understand it, and that's perfect. Ensuring they achieve their digital goals. Let's welcome Peter to the Comcast video stream and start our next segment. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right, Peter, welcome to the show. Hey, Nathan, great to be here. Good good to have you on. So where are you calling from first? We always want to know where you're calling from. I'm calling from the fabulous city of Los Angeles. Oh, Los Angeles. All right. So outside of your city, is it nice? It's, it's, you know, the Pacific it's Northwest. Probably we're sunny and out. 70 it's 70 degrees. It's 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 seventy degrees and sunny, so this is like a first for us in a long time. No, so I'm see. talking about where he is. Oh, where he's at too. Okay, where, where, where's it at? Is it nice and warm where you're at? It, it's amazing. It is it is seventy degrees, so you guys are right on the money, and it's always like a sunny seventy degrees most of the time over here. So just a great place to be. There you go. All right. Well, Peter, welcome to the show. Now, thank you. First thing I need to know is explain to us how to make great advancements to a website and explain to us what WordPress is because you specialize in this. So for the listening audience, explain a little bit about your websites that you customize and what WordPress is. Yeah, sure. So when it comes to building websites, you can really choose uh, so many different platforms. And the number one most popular uh, website building platform in the world is WordPress. So there's approximately 2 billion websites on the internet. And of those, uh, roughly about 850 million of them are built on WordPress and so they have about a 42 market share. And then the next uh, most popular ones are going to be things like a Shopify, maybe if you've heard of those, uh, or Wix. So, and those have a, a lot less uh, market share. So because WordPress is so popular, there's been this amazing uh, ecosystem that, you know, people have been building upon. So basically you can make whatever you want with WordPress. And it's really great for scaling. Um, like if you have a business or if you have a nonprofit, uh, so that's what um, what WordPress is, and basically that's what we specialize in. And absolutely, we think it's a great tool, and we, uh, it's great to also hear that you guys are talking about AI on the show today because uh, there's lots of great enhancements uh, with AI on WordPress and with making websites. So I think that can be really helpful uh, to anybody within the audience who's looking to uh, build a website or to make enhancements to the website using AI. Okay, yeah, right. we talk about AI quite a bit. Now you, you're going to be excited about this, aren't you, Mike? Uh, not yet. <laughs> okay, all right. Tell me. All right, so Peter, now first off, are you a chat GPT guy or are you a fan of another LLM, which is a large language model? We've talked about it on the show quite a bit for your AI work. Which, which, which type of uh, AI services do you specialize in? Yeah, I, I love this question, Nate, and, and that's the thing. As I am a big um, chat GPT guy. But not ex I'm not exclusive with ChatGPT, so okay. I like to to try the different AIs uh, by giving the same prompt a different one and seeing which AI gives me the best output, and then I'll use that one. So in addition to ChatGPT, I also use Google's Gemini, okay. and I also find myself using uh, Claude three. So oh, look, th those are the different ones. <laughs> look at that, a thumbs up. Did you <laughs> see a thumbs up? Thumbs up. A thumbs up came right in the stream itself. I don't know. Was yeah, I was gonna ask. A I was gonna ask if ChatGPT got jealous, and then this <laughs> thumbs up came I up. Decided to do that too. <laughs> All right. So ChatGPT, we we love ChatGPT. I oh, love you Chat love ChatGPT. I, I am. A you big have fan been of talking. That. You. I love I, I I love Sam Altman. I, I got a little man you crush on You him. have a bro crush on him. I do. On I do. That. I think he's a good guy. Okay. So now, Peter, moving on. How do you see AI essentially shaping the future of WordPress sites? And are there tools or plugins that you'd recommend? And, and how do you use it to become the experts that your company is regarding this tool? Yeah, I, lo I love using AI and I highly recommend it, if, you know, for anybody who's building their site, whether they're a DIYer or maybe, you know, partnering up with an agency to have them build their site. And that's because before, you know, the problem with building websites is that it used to take a really long time 
to uh, get the, 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 the text, the, the, the copy, so to speak, on, for the website. You're like, hey, I don't know what to put here. What are you supposed to put on the homepage? Or how do you make an about page? What's the, the best practices? And then AI came along and really revolutionized that and because they're able to you know, take a look at, hey, what, what are the best practices from websites and copy? So they, uh, AI does a tremendous job with you just knowing kind of how to write you know, a few prompts into AI and to be able to get all the text that you would need for your website for any kind of page. So all it takes is just a little bit of finesse to, to know kind of how to get the gold out of the AI. Uh, because uh, I think a lot of people kind of misunderstand and think that like, oh, I can just write in one sentence and out comes this amazing output. Yeah, explain to the gold. Yeah. What, what are some of your secrets here in AI? Because that's really important. Sometimes people don't know really how to, to use the prompt. It's kind of the new version of a uh, web search crawl ability. So how, how do you use the best AI prompts? Yeah. So one of the things, Nathan, that you were talking about earlier is that you said, hey, am I a, a chat GPT guy? Well, in the name is one of the secrets and it's chat. Right. So the whole point is for you to have a conversation with AI so that you can continue to refine the output. And so some of the best uh, you know, secrets that I have for getting amazing gold out of AI is whatever it is that you're trying to, to tell it, you want it to always, uh, for example, tell it its role. And that's how you always want to start. So, for example, let's say um, you want to build a website. So you would start out your product by saying you are a world class website design expert. All right. That's your first sentence. Okay. Then next, you're going to add the context. You're going to say, what is it that you want it to do? Um, you're going to say, hey, I want you to give me the text for a homepage for my business. My business is uh, basically runs uh, sells tools uh, online. So you're going to say that. Then you're going to say, hey, here are my services that we offer. Here are the different things that we offer. And here's our pricing. And here's a little bit about our company. Now give me the text to pay uh, to, the, the, I can copy and paste to my website and write in a conversational tone. You want to put that at the very end to say, hey, how do you want the output? Do you want it to sound professional? Do you want it to sound conversational? Do you want it to sound informational? You can tell it however you want. And here's another secret is that if there's a famous person that you want it to mimic, you can actually do that. If you want it to say, Hey, right in the tone of, let's say, Bob Vila, you can you can have it do that. And it will actually give you text that would sound exactly like him because it's been trained on billions and billions of models, including how Bob Vila speaks, you know, or whoever is your idol or whoever it is that you want to mimic. So those are just a little bit of insider tips of how you can get that gold out of AI. So Mark yeah, would say, I, write like Elon Musk. No, right? Well, yeah, I, I would say I would write like you, but you get all your words wrong. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that, that would be really good. All right, so building a website, you also need to get good graphics. Where are where, where some of the sites you go to for graphics? Yeah, so you can go to different places. You know, I, I don't recommend going to stock imagery anymore, um, like the Adobe stock photos or anything like that. It's been done, you know, or Unsplash. You know, that, that's a very famous website where you can get free uh, photos uh, and uh, because they're free, you can get them from anywhere. So now using AI, you can use the power of AI to create amazing photos. And some of them are even free. It's like you can use the free version of Microsoft Copilot AI, uh, which is built on a, uh, a kind of graphics um, AI called Dolly 3. And you can you know, tell any image that you want. You can go in there and say the prompt and you say, hey, get me a picture of Two funny guys sitting in a studio having an amazing time while drinking whiskey doing a radio show, and it'll produce it. So I think that's a great idea. Oh, we so we that. don't need to be here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, hang on. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your company itself. Those are great uh, information to have. What inspired you to launch Swift Press Support, and how has yeah. your journey been so far? Sure. You know, for me, what inspired me to start Surf Press Support, uh, where we, we build websites and apps for small business owners. And it really started uh, a little bit uh, about nine years ago, where I was just having, you know, end, uh, trouble making ends meet with my family. You know, living in L.A., L.A. is like the expensive. number two or number three most expensive mm -hmm. uh, city uh, in, in all of um, the United States to live in. And it's in California, which is like the number two or number three state, also the most expensive and I was just having, you know, a hard time with making ends meet from my job. And I was like, okay, so, you know, what am I good at? You know, what can I do to bring in more money? And so uh, I was good at websites. So I started building websites for different clients and stuff. 
And then one time I had a friend of mine who had a marketing agency and he said, Hey, Peter, how do you, what do you think about doing a white label agency partnership? And I was like, white label agency, what is that about? And he's like, well, that's where you build websites for us, but you act as if uh, you're a part of our staff, but we treat you like an independent contractor. And I said, sure, that sounds amazing. I'll do it. And that's how I started. And, you know, the, the journey has been incredible uh, just because websites, every business needs a website. Every nonprofit needs a website. So basically, it's been so much fun to be able to interact with different people, small businesses, and um, also, you know, uh, nonprofits to connect with them and to learn about more about, you know, what they do and to build them sites um, that help them win and to accomplish their goals. So this, this field is always, always changing. So we always have to be up on our game to always learn the new technologies. And no doubt, uh, AI is radically uh, you know, transforming our industry. Now, are you worried about losing your job to AI? Because, I mean, if AI is so good, then I guess they don't need to hire you as a, a web developer, right? Or a web yeah. a host. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm not, uh, just because I think like the, with the people that I deal with, they're people that want to leverage their time. Okay. So no, no matter how good the AI gets, and it's always getting better, um, there's always going to be people who understand that like, hey, you know what, I'm not the best at building websites or prompting the AI and telling it what to do or creating images or putting the text with the images together. I want to leverage that out and to give that to somebody who's really good at it at an affordable price. And I want to do what I do best, which is be a business owner, lead my team and, you know, uh, do whatever it is that I need to do uh, to, to bring in, you know, the the big bucks for the company. And so that's usually who, who come and hire us are going to be the small business owners that want to leverage their time and they don't want to have to finagle with it and spend hours uh, every single week, you know, uh, taking care of it. And don't forget also that with with WordPress, you need a maintenance company to continue to maintain it because just like a computer can get a virus, uh, so can a website. So you need to, uh, a company to be in your corner to keep things updated and to test it out, to keep the hackers out, to keep viruses out. So you're going to need somebody also to help you do that. All right. So thank you so for much, so much for being on our show. Where can people uh, find out and get in touch with you uh, after the show ends today? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me. The best place to connect with me is at my website. So that's swiftpresssupport.com. And uh, if you like, you, we can, you can hit the book a call button and you can get on a free call with me and uh, check out all that we have to offer on swiftpresssupport.com. All right. All right. Thank you so much. That ends our Technology Insider segment. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side as we're going to be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. Join the fun and grab tickets to GeekFest West, the three-day Geek Festival extravaganza of fun and entertainment that will take place on the third weekend in July. Learn more at geekfest.com. GeekFest will feature diverse activities, including a film festival, vendor hall, street fair, outdoor music festival, cosmic cosplay, and video game tournaments. Join us at GeekFest West, the ultimate celebration of geek culture. To learn more, visit geekfest.com. That is geekfest.com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going back to March 23rd, 1857. Yes, 1857, the world's first commercial safety elevator goes into service. In New York City, the Hogwith department store, the elevator created and installed by Elijah Otis, was powered by a steam engine that moved at the rate of 40 feet per minute and took 15 seconds to move between floors. By the 1870s, there were 2,000 of these Otis elevators in service. The creation of a practical and safe elevator was a major step towards the development of modern skyscrapers since it makes the buildings accessible for more than a few floors. Ironically, the first elevator was shut down after three years because not enough customers wanted to use it and opted for the stairs. People said, why would you ever need to use a device when you can just walk up the stairs? Yeah, that's part of our obesity problem now. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go. All right, well, that was This Week in Technology. Have you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over 180 weekly broadcasts spanning 40-plus years of video, podcasts, and blog information? You can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have Mark's Mumble Whiskey Review. See you after the break. 
Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. Been over there mumbling for That's a bit. Right. So. I am mumbling. I am back today, mumbling with you gentlemen. Yes. And I had to come back today because what today is. What is today? I could not miss today. Today must be sexy producer in a show. That's I'm, what I'm saying. I'm, right? I'm, yeah. You is know, it, did you see her just cringe? Just I know. Now? Well, that's okay. what I think today would be. Well, what's today? It's Nathan Cringe Day. I'm uh, embarrassed that you two gentlemen don't know it. No, I do not. It's National Ball Day. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Today is a national Star Trek day also in my little calendar that I get oh, the pops very, up. You're very close. It's am something I, related. Yes, you are. I am right. Okay. So today is Live Long and Prosper Day. Oh, I. you know what? I have that on a calendar at home. I, I, okay. why, why are you disappointed in me? Why would I know that? I, I'm just saying that I knew that it was there. Oh. That's 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 how well okay, this we'll live long most... and prosper. Okay, live long and prosper. Peace and long life. Okay. One of the most well wishing days, live long and prosper day, is celebrated on March 26, which is the birth date of its inspiration, Leonard Nimoy. Okay. Long live long and prosper is a Vulcan blessing, which was devised by Leonard Nimoy, who played the half Vulcan science officer, Mister Spock, in the Star Trek series. Star he Trek. De- Trek. <laughs> Trek. It's Trek, Nathan, again. Thank you so much. He developed the Vulcan salute representing Live Long and Prosper, which first debuted in season two episode, Amok Time. Oh, I guess I guess that season one that it was in. No, I guess that's Uh, normal for everybody uh, to have problems. Everybody on the shows always has problems doing it, but I guess that's normal. I've never had a problem doing it. You like it too. There you go. You're pretty good. But you're like. I gotta, oh, I gotta, look at Odie go. I got to move look my fingers. Oh, look at that. That's a great. Okay. All right. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about this whiskey. So just like they visited New Worlds, we're going to talk about New Riff. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. So Ken Lewis opened New Riff Distillery in the spring of 2014 in Newport, Kentucky, which is just on the other side of the river from Cincinnati. Now, while New Riff built up the supply of their own age products, they actually sourced high rye bourbon from MGP. This they named under their brand OKI, which stands for Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, AK distilled in Indiana, bottled in Kentucky, and loved in Ohio. This brand has now been retired, and New Riff is focused on their own distillate. In addition, Ken Lewis just announced his retirement for this spring of 2024. Now, while sipping on this whiskey, as you gentlemen have been doing, to me it tastes relatively young. It's a bit grain forward with a newer oak flavor. It's also a pretty hot bourbon for the proof. I do think this bourbon has character, but it lacks a little depth and complexity to complement its rye content. And that's, Mike, why you're getting that, that rye burn a little too strong on it. I'm also... A huge, huge New Riff fanboy, but this particular single barrel does not tickle my fancy. This is the inherent potential pitfalls of single barrel products. Because remember, each bottle you pick up, unless it's from the exact same barrel, there's a variance. Sometimes it can be better and sometimes worse than another of the same bottle. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it tastes good, but I certainly don't detect that full medley of fruitness that you were talking about earlier. Well, you know, that's what, I, I taste yeah. the vanilla. That's not fruit. Well, I taste the vanilla. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Mark, thanks for that mumble. Whiskey You're welcome. And technology. What a great pairing. Just like baseball games and Cracker Jacks. Now let's get ready for our technology fail of the week. It's hot dogs. Hot dogs. Okay. We are out Careful. of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. Do you like free food? 
Depends. Well, now is the time to go to Why visit are you Panera. Me a Panera like Bread that? has been experiencing a nationwide IT outage since Saturday. My wife and I experienced this on Friday of last week at the Outback Steakhouse restaurant. We ended up with free meals and a drink because their IT system went down and they did not know how to take credit cards. Since Saturday, though, this U.S. food chain giant Panera Bread has been experiencing a nationwide outage that impacts its IT systems, its POS systems, and that's for point of sale, not other POS systems. <laughs> uh, well, Phones it could and be various both. internal systems, according to an employee's reported. While all stores are open, they only accept, accept cash payments and reward program members cannot redeem their points. Essentially, in the stores, they have kiosks that say that essentially you need to now talk to a live human no. so that you can then purchase your orders. There you well, go. Is this a hack that's happening? On that fixing. We'll see if that is the case. That has not been released yet, but a spokesman from Panera Bread did not immediately respond to have they had a cyber attack yet. Well, now let's go right into our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, let's talk about Apple Gestures. Essentially, okay. a virtual assistant on an Apple device. This 38 year old Jacqueline Tene, Tenegali, it looks like, uh, was a mental health counselor Tenaglia. in Boston. And essentially, she had a, a client on the phone. She put a thumbs down when this client was crying. But what do we think about this hand gesture and how does this affect a client if you're giving them counseling? Well, okay. So the, this is this is problematic because there's a contextual issue here. Okay. So uh regardless of whether or not you you you, you don't know the the cus, the client doesn't know what's going on. Right. So the client's looking at the screen. She's she's having a an emotional time and suddenly a thumbs down comes on the screen. What are you going to think? Um, uh, I'm going to be really depressed. I would be. You see during our interview today, do you see the thumbs yeah, up? He, yeah. That was he on would, an Apple. That was on an yeah, Apple device. Yeah, I saw that. He did it on so, purpose. That, that can be problematic. Now, it's only because of the context of the situation that makes it so problematic. And that's one of the problems that this, this, whatever this is, has. Gestures. So whoever whoever decided to create this program, they they didn't think about the ramifications of certain contexts. They just think, oh, this is fun, but obviously this this has a problem because what the therapist was doing was a normal listening gesture. Yep. Right. So we have gestural things, and one of a, li- a listening gesture is just putting your chin on your on your hand. And the program or AI or whatever drives this thing interpreted it as a thumbs down. And here it is popping out this thumbs down thing during a therapeutic discourse. And regardless of how it happened, how it happened or why it happened, it creates something that's not there. It Amazing. creates a variable that now she had to go back and she had to apologize. Apologize, and obviously, you know, it was understandable, and she they didn't know exactly what. Supposedly. Yeah, but this is a problem with this sort of this sort of ideas is that we don't we don't understand human nature enough to to drive some of this stuff. Even experts aren't don't know everything about human behavior. And then you've got technical people trying to mimic this kind of thing. All and right. it, and it creates oddball situations. That was definitely an oddball situation, but now let's go from an oddball situation to a happy situation. Let's go to our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right. What do we have here that we're tasting we again? We're drinking new riff. Single barrel, barrel strength. It's a straight bourbon, four years old, 110.5 proof, roughly $55. All right. Are oh, you thumbs up, thumbs down? Mike. Well, I I'm, I'm, I'm think I'm becoming more of a snob as we do yeah. this more and more because uh, I can taste the, the newness in it. Yeah. 
So I'm going to give it a thumbs down. A thumbs down! Oh, yeah, my it's, word. It's not bad. I'm agreeing with Mike on this it's one. I actually bad. poured myself some of that 1792 12 year from last week that oh, you guys had. Okay. I, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I thought it was good. 50 it, bucks. It's right not my, bad. Okay. Like I said, it's not, but I, I'm a new Riff fanboy, but this bottle, I would not get, get this specific bottle again. I, I, I do like the bottle. I have other single barrels from them that are delicious. All right. Well, guys, we're just about out of time. We want to thank our listening audience to listen to the show today. It was a great show. We talked about AI. We talked about websites. We talked about an elevator. We talked about how gestures can uh, set the apple cart. We got some gestures from Odie. We did? We did. Yeah. She, <laughs> she, 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 she gives them she all the time. Us, she gave us a single finger salute a couple of times. All right. If you want to be a caller, you can always click on that talk back at the top right-hand corner. And remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. We'll see you next week. Later. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at tech time radio, remember mum's the word, have a safe and fantastic week.